ladies and gentlemen, we've got a large boulder the size of a small boulder that is completely blocking eastbound lane 145. So please use caution and watch for emergency vehicles in the area. I am back in the saddle again. Did you miss me? I missed you. Hey, do you remember back in the day when I was like, yo, dude, when I talk to scientists, they seem freaked out about the ocean's acidic levels and they don't want to talk about it? Ken Klippenstein, this seems fine. The Pacific Ocean is so acidic that it's dissolving Dungeness crabs, shells. Yeah, it doesn't seem fine. Remember back in October 2019 where I was like, I'm 99% convinced we're going to get a stock market crash across the globe in 2020 due to the three interest rate cuts, the $450 billion spent by the Federal Reserve in short-term repo loan action, and just general chicanery since 2008 crash where nobody solved anything and everybody got super greedy. Well, due to the coronavirus, asterisk, major markets across the globe crashed down about 1.5%. I'm not really looking for the real crash till about April or one of the Jupiter-Pluto conjunctions. But it is interesting to see oil hovering at about $52. So remember, the economy explodes if oil goes below 46 and stays there for too long. But the absolute crux of this video will be about the Game of Thrones story of fire and ice that is our winter. And apparently winter's like a wishing well, where you can look at it and be like, oh, dude, it is the coldest winter ever, or it is the hottest winter ever. You get to make up your own facts in 2020. The crux of this video will be about the northeast storm coming this weekend. And the big bad bitches, they're making their way into the North Pacific West. Wait, I said that funny. I'm kind of rusty. I took two days off and just kind of slept most of the time. Because, man, I've been working hard in December and January. And so Jack Sillen here, who's always chilling, is letting us know the first key disturbance for the possible weekend storm is starting to move onshore in the Pacific Northwest this evening. It ended up being on the much stronger side of Saturday's modeling envelope, which is mixed news for those rooting for a big East Coast storm. And we have both coasts with eyes on the prize, the prize being a storm. The East Coast is a bunch of snow fiends, and they're like, man, we need a blockbuster storm. This incredible graphic, as are many, brought to us by Storm Chaser Nick. So Chris Crepon is doing it right, bringing us the 120-hour mean sea level pre pressure on the EC, GFS, Icon, and UK Met. And then he's like, good night, folks. But I'm awake. Dang, I've just been sleeping, so. So we're looking at it. I detailed this storm from 10 days out when both the Euro and the GFS had locked on a pretty nasty storm for Massachusetts, we were talking about 955, 960, which would make it Category 3, Category 4, Norricane. But I wanted to point out, because not only do I do a great job as Planetary Defense Commander, but you are on the Space Force team as well, we call Asteroid Fight Club. And so we were both paying attention to see how good and how real the Atmospheric Defense Team is. Because hurricane season is only a couple of months away. And it would appear our atmospheric defense team is doing a fantastic job like they've been doing since before hurricane season. And are they blasting things with microwaves and whatnot? I would guess maybe, dude, because, you know, everybody likes to paint everything negative on the truth community. But you got to know there are good people out there just like me and you who are trying not to get people killed. And so while we have some models gearing towards the East Coast still, the millibars have come way down. The king of weather Twitter and the best weatherman on the planet, Cranky Weather Guy, started dropping video movies for us. Final evening update, short-term regional weather taps, and some sneaky snow with lead wave Wednesday, question mark. All right, this will be about a minute and a half. I'm going to try and read his stuff. January 27th, 9 p.m. local short-term weather update. This one is short-term, though. Okay, can you handle that? A couple weak boundaries sliding through the trough base, sweeping more easterly in time. 
Storm is going to drop in and put on a rapid show of development and reorganization in the mid-levels. Knows how it's got that straight up down feature. And then we have the lead noise, dictates exit stream flow and environment table setter and downstream traffic. Evening temps in the 20s and 30s, mild for the time of year, but nothing outlandish. Central, mid-Atlantic, south and east, 40s. Our decayed broad low, slow exiting. Lead entering the southern plains, storm in the Pacific Northwest. Interesting repeat retrograde over the top feed of cold into a system and pipeline at the 700 millibar. Deep Arctic air up and away for now. Our mild zonal split flow setup gives us marginal cold. Colder air descending back into the region for a bit. Seasonal tap, however. Mild zonal right behind. Slips below free freezing region wide tonight. Split region tomorrow as cooler air presses slowly south. High as Wednesday. About on par for norms, while Wednesday night dips good before milder returns. Decaying snow showers tonight, be it lake effect or weak frontal born, sprinkles flurries eastern coasts. Mountain mischief lightens yet continues. Weak lead disturbances exiting the northeast coast or North, North Carolina coast. The big picture. Next up, the lead waves for the mid-Atlantic in a couple days. Shower and sneaky snow. Then focus turns to the storm. Tuesday, first impression. Wednesday, first comparison. Thursday, first refinement. I'm excited. In honor of Parks and Rec, we're doing a fun run with the models. We're January 30th, and the storm would be the weekend to start off February. Notice how they come together. The GFS pushes it up into Canada at about a 976 low. And then you get some more storms that try and come together. They've been doing some wild things on the models lately, but as the trend continues to be, they trend pretty bad on the models, and then by the time the storm gets here, they aren't as bad. And remember, the trend before hurricane season was the exact opposite. They used to overperform the models. So what has changed? Ask yourself that. But for now, we will definitely be keeping our eye on that storm. I think they will continue to try to lessen its impact and push it out to sea. Will they get it all the way, or will it? retrograde curve back in we'll have to watch we've still got about five or six days to do that and that nasty rain the models continue to show us nasty rain for the southeast but it doesn't come in we can see the storm heading up and into the pacific northwest you can see some rain coming into texas we've been getting rain in texas but nothing too major nothing too massive that we can't handle and so but the pack northwest continues to get it wave after wave after wave and right now they are under the brunt of the gun and then the other people under the brunt of the gun would be europe and new finland newfoundland when did they find it it ain't really that new bro okay so but yeah you can see that the upper pacific northwest is continuing to get rain after rain and some heavy spots so washington oregon Canada, specifically British Columbia, keep an eye out. Super duper special shout out to Lynn and Susan for all the love over the last two weeks. They all are incredible. And thank you to everyone in Asteroid Fight Club. I love you guys. And wow, has 2020 just been off the rails, off the charts, crazy wild or what? Yeah. Um, but apparently the coronavirus is going to be worse than I thought. Because unlike the SARS, it's got a really long incubation period, and uh, you can get it from things and breathing, which it's hard to avoid breathing or things. We're now looking at the models that are pumping out. I mean, the storms are still pretty big in size, but the worst parts of them are scheduled to hit us. But if you keep a specific eye focus on England and Europe, you'll see that they will be getting the brunt of the storms punch right in the mouth. Boom, again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And then New Finland, Greenland, they're going to get the worst of it so far. Man, no matter what, it's going to be an interesting hurricane season. But that is a long way away, especially considering how many years we've gone through just in the first three or four weeks of the year. The Florida Wavemaster.
Dada Boo letting us know the 18Z GFS. This is just inside 96 hours. 18Z has trended back west. A tad at 126. Faster mover from Gulf to New England in 38 hours. No matter what, it is going to be a Bombo Genesis, but who it hits after it bombs out, that is still up in question. Justin Stapleton, Welp, February appears to want to start off with a non winter for us as well. We're running out of time, cold weather fans. Hey, dude, I just report the news, man. There are some reports of possible snow in Florida in February, but that's like nine days away, which is like forever. Robert LaRoche keeping it goach. Just what Newfoundland needs, Newfoundland. They're going to get a lot of snow. Again, models have been swinging back and forth with this thing, although they've taken the mill bars out a ton. I would guess, though, that this area will probably mostly get rain because we the trend has been for it to be hotter up into New Jersey and New York and then the colder stuff would be more north but I mean exactly it's a large small boulder duh swing and a miss swing and a hit and eh, we got four days to figure it out but Eric Fisher pointing out the jet stream is just ripping all over the globe right now very zonal and fast from Asia across the Pacific and notice how it breaks up right around Hawaii if it didn't, imagine how fast it would be. Because that's some pretty kicking winds. Man, that's some definitely pretty kicking winds. It would have been much more problematic if somehow it isn't getting broken up. Texas is going to be in the 80s in parts this week, so, you know, wear a bikini if you want to. Solar wind is kicking, as we've had a coronal mass ejection or two in the last few days, plus two sets of sunspots. One from the old solar cycle and one from the new. But have no fear because you can manage warm weather even in the winter. But the great debate rages on. In our Dynacast database, which includes 380 U.S. cities, just 11 have negative departures from normal for winter to date. Yeah, dude, it's Texas has really had a spring, you know. I'm just telling you like it is. And it's been very springy. It's not, I've been wore my jacket like three times. I like cold because at the moment I'm overweight. Put all this weight for nothing because I thought we were going into some mini ice age. But no, now I feel dumb and chubby. Well, I'm fat technically. Which sucks because New Year's, I'm sorry, Valentine's Day is coming up. And you know what? It's bad luck if you don't get a kiss on Valentine's Day. Asterisk, I just made that up. Chris Murphy, rinse and repeat. More rain for lower elevations, more snow for higher elevations this week. January will go out much the same way it came in. Stayed. Gloomy. Whoa. That's for the Pacific Northwest, though. Vancouver, you're getting hit with an L. North of Whitehorse, you're getting hit with an L. Portland, you're getting rain. Yeah, that thing will move south then and combine with another storm system. But the the storms have been mild overall, which is good. The sun dogs be kicking. They are not tricking your eyes. That shit is really happening, man. Look at that right there. It's like a comet tail. Crazy. Russell Dangle, who's got a pet bangle, showing us the train of storms that will be moving into the Pacific Northwest. So Chris Crapon is taping on the information to our foreheads, showing us pretty much the next 48 hours, I guess. So you are going to get some snow across the east states, the lower four corners, plus Kansas. Is that Kansas? Wyoming? Whatever. Is there a difference between Kansas and Wyoming? Yeah, there is. I know. Cranky weather guy breaking it on down, breaking it on down the road. Um, yeah, video update, jet level discussion, and weekend storm tracking envelope. And the great news is, I got to leave my house on the Chinese New Year and go hang out with people. And I found out I can be hilarious when hanging out with people. So thank you to Harley, 8-Ball, and JC. We had a lot of fun. We went to the Chinese Lunar New Year Festival. That was neat. And then we went to a sandwich shop. That was neat. And then we went to an Asian market. And if I do get the coronavirus and die, I want you to know the peanut sauce I bought in a bottle. At the Asian market, it was totally worth it. 
locate the system. That's a rule of thumb for guidance. Is there split flow? That looks like split flow to me, bro. I hope you guys have had a great new year. Hey, that almost looks like a big smiley, big mouth smiley face with horns. That sounds evil. Limit trust and solutions. Okay. Never mind downstream split flow issues. Another guidance tripwire to advancing the waves exit motion. So yeah, man. Maybe the split flow and the trailing kicker playing 5,000 mile catch up along with another model tripwire lead noise. Many reasons to pick Tuesday to begin any discussion. So Cranky here is discussing it without discussing it because he's cool like that. But man, you know what? I just want to say I picked for definitely the last like 30 years of my life. I picked a be cool, stay cool strategy for all things. And I think that strategy for me is working out. But yeah, dude, we'll be watching this thing. And uh, now that I've rested up, I will be on it like poop on stink. Wait, or is it the other way around? Hey, baby, would you like an injection of cold air on your backside? Of a storm system will be potent enough to produce a swath of snow and slippery travel across the southern plains Monday night through Tuesday. Yeah, we're talking near Pueblo, Colorado, Garden City, you getting snow. Amarillo, you getting snow. And some ice. Oklahoma, you're getting snow and ice. And Kansas, which is a lot like Wyoming, you're getting snow and ice as well. And then the skosh of snow or ice from Missouri. The Schumann resonance has been resonating. This is why, like, I don't know, I felt like I just was so tired for like two days. It's like all I did was sleep. It was like this hit me right in the forehead. And then I was like, man, I'm going to sleep. But I'm totally back at it, man. All right, rumblings of a storm off the East Coast for the weekend early next week. We'll touch on it a little for a heads up, but still too early to get excited. In the near term, we have a southern tracking system to follow. Details with Jenny from the block. Okay, so yeah, you definitely got cold air behind it. But I don't think it's going to be nothing too record-breaking. And you pretty much got winter at the north parts of the United States above that line. And then spring at the bottoms. So watch this low. And early models had some, bringing some hella rain. But they must be getting jiggy with it up within the atmosphere. But if this thing does do weird bomb out level stuff, it would be near New Newfoundland, Newfoundland. So yeah, it's your Pacific Northwest for the soggy wrap up of January. It was rounds and rounds of rain and snow continued to shower the region. Copper's down about 10%. And last week, 8.4 to be specific. I showed the girl in a bikini to make a specific point, not just to show a girl in a bikini. Because you can't make out with ones and zeros, bro. Chase Benton, forecast highs Monday. Very warm across parts of Texas with around half of the state in the 70s or 80s. <sighs> I guess I got to get in shape now. But I want to be like Andy Dwyer from Parks and Rec, where I'm hilarious, cute, chubby with a great heart and then i get the girlfriend and then i lose the 50 pounds although i'm already star lord so whatever scott hefty bringing in the nefty images jupiter's volcanic moon io the infrared shows the heat from hundreds of active volcanoes driven by the tidal forces exerted by the mighty jupiter and so uh why don't they take pictures of earth like this wouldn't they be helpful yeah i'll be keeping my eye out on the weather and all things. Kind of like a total sexless, sexless nerd that happens to be your planetary defense commander. This is about the secret lives of San Diego's crime-fighting real-life superheroes who dress up in costume and protect the streets. The Extreme Justice League helps break up bar fights, protects the homeless, and assists, assists drunken party-goers. Jack Sillin chilling and letting us know he's got thoughts as well on the major storm this weekend. Will it be major? Will it be minor? Will it be somewhere in between? Yes. Yes, probably. Sedusa. I'm not perfect, but I'm a Pisces, so close enough. I don't know, man. I'm kind of scared of water signs now. Well, I mean, just the women. But we could get a stress warming, stratosphere warming update. The warming phase is about to start this week. It will penetrate the surface zone. Oh, lucky you. Compress the polar vortex, reduce the core power, and disconnect it from the troposphere which might lead to cold air. The euro also shows support. 
Yeah, models continue to, this would be February 11th, models continue to show us major big massive storms, but by the time they get here, they've been tamed by the prayer warriors, by atmospheric defense, by sheer luck. Who knows? But that's why we'll keep tracking it. Ain't that right, Landon? You swag, bro. The watchers letting us know we've got some unusually rapid inflation detected beneath Mount Thorbjorn. Aviation color, a code raised to yellow Iceland. Yeah, I'd say there's a chance of some earthquake activity and volcanic activity. So I'll keep tracking the situations for you. And I'm glad to be back in the saddle again. But we got a pretty big storm headed towards UK, Ireland, and France. It'll probably be there by Tuesday, which is soon. Man, I'm glad I trained you guys in Asteroid Fight Club. Um, because 2020 is pretty wild. All right, I'll probably be wrapping this one up because I got so much to talk about. Chop it up into different videos. And thank you to CC and CJ. You guys are cool. You said you'd visit, but I don't know. I know I haven't texted you, but like, I dropped my phone and cracked it during the Lunar Festival thingy. And so now it's kind of hard to text or whatever. And I got to buy a new phone. But hey, thanks for not taking the payout. I know I mentioned someone came to me. It was like back in 2013, 2015, and offered me $250,000 and he had it in like a Chase Blue folder, not to cash, but just a bank account and access to it. But I had to give up making videos forever. I was like, sorry, bro. Th that's not, that's not, no, that's not my style. Anywho, but yeah, maybe this will be the year I get to hang out with people. That would be great because I'm tired of being in this foxhole. And I'm hilarious if I mention that. Anywho, I'll figure something out. It is Kumi to Unite. It's a good time to unite. And I did scrub my toilet or whatever. All right, I probably said too much. I do that sometimes. Anyway, God bless everyone everywhere. Everybody's awesome. And let's get better because there's maximum room for improvement for all of us, including me. I love you, go. I love you, Gaia. Gaia. I love you guys. Stay cool. God bless everyone. And I do appreciate you guys more than you know. But I'm going to try and express it properly. All right. Valentine's Day. It is only 19 days away. I'm scared.